Do we have a problem here? I sure did when it comes to the K connector. Plus, the advertised specs on this say that the bandwidth exceeds those permitted by FCC regulations. And can this thing even be unlocked to transmit outside of GMRS on ham bands, Marine or MERS? Will it receive on 220? Let's find out. What's up? I'm Mike, N2MAK, and my GMRS call sign is WRQD683. Now, we all know GMRS is for growers and not showers, at least when it comes to antennas. This here is the Baofeng UV 5G Mini. It's a GMRS radio, the equivalent of the Baofeng UV 5R Mini. Now, can this radio hang with the big boys? I think we're good on innuendo, at least for right now. But first of all, Radioddity sent me this. They reached out, asked if I'd like to review the radio. I said, sure. So there are spurious commissions involved, affiliate links in the description down below. But if you're the type of person that will easily crash out when it comes to sponsored content videos, then go watch one of the Spot the Imposter videos all the other cool kids are watching. All right, bonus points for all of you who were eagle-eyed in the opening. You might have seen this box. This is not for this radio. This is actually for uh, a tri-band uh, Baofeng, but one can never have too many Baofeng. So let's set this box aside and grab the correct one and just give you some size comparison there. So yeah, these two little guys, the antennas, everything all in this box. Um, obviously it has been opened, so this is not a true unboxing. And we're just going to dump everything out before we cram it back in. But other than the plastics and the papers, we of course have the manual. We've got a pair of lanyards. I, I, I am not a fan of this like ribbon cable or whatever, or not cable, this ribbon whatever it is, uh, but you at least have this little quick disconnect right there, which is kind of neat. So if you're a lanyard person, there you go. And then you actually get two programming cable, or not, these are, oh, correction, not programming cables, these are power cables, because this radio is a USB-C port. So you can see, look at that, call sign fits perfectly on the uh, belt clip. So. Let's set the uh, the cables aside. There's no uh, there's no docks or cradles for this. You just plug it right in. Um, now let's see the batteries. One thing I will point out on this radio is the belt clip is attached to the battery. Obviously, you can take the belt clip off. I'll see if I can do that quickly. Yeah, it'll slide slide off. But if, you know, and these are smaller size batteries, these are 16 milliamp. Um, if you're gonna swap out batteries, you're gonna have to swap out the uh, belt clip and everything too. But uh, anyway, that's what you get. Just the small stub antenna right here. I've seen the same one on the, uh, the regular UV5R Mini and it's gonna say that it's, you know, for two meters, 70 centimeters or, VHF, UHF, let's see where, there we go. Uh, but with these being GMRS radios, uh, higher frequency, you're not gonna need much. Now for the K connector. That's this thing right here, the uh, speaker mic port, which also you would use for the programming cable, which I wanna stress, programming cable is not included. That's not so much of a deal breaker given that these radios can be programmed with Bluetooth, uh, which I'm not going to go through in this video, but it's pretty straightforward. Download an app, connect, and then you can make changes that way. I prefer using Chirp, and you can program these radios in Chirp, but you're going to need your standard Baofeng programming cable, which I already have because I have plenty of uh, Baofengs. However, I kept getting errors when it came to uh, trying to program in Chirp. And what I found out with, with both of these radios is I needed to, 
when I put in the connector, I needed to apply a little bit extra force. And I actually had to hold my finger there when programming. Otherwise, I'd keep getting errors. Um, and I I've been able to uh, program them using Chirp, and that's a really helpful feature because it's an easy way to add in a lot of channels, especially if you have other radios programmed with repeaters and stuff like that. Uh, but it's a little frustrating. Uh, the only thing that I can explain, and I did what everyone else does, I, I clicked on uh, Google and, and did some searches and said that some of the Baofangs uh, will sometimes have... Um, poor tolerances or quality control when it comes to the connectors and if things aren't in just right it, it may not work i got these early i got these um i don't know if they, i don't want to say that they were pre-production models but i got them pretty early before they went up for sale on a lot of the sites and i don't know if that explains it um if it's part of a broader problem if you've had an issue with whether it's the gmrs version or the uh, ham version if you had an issue with the uh the K connector, whether it's a programming cable or a speaker mic, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, that would be helpful to know, not just for myself, but also for some of the other viewers. If you're curious about how it stacks up compared to the uh, regular Baofeng UV5R, well, here you go. Uh, you can definitely see it's certainly uh, a lot, a lot shorter. Um, it does have uh, still a little bit of, of thickness to it, but again, Definitely much smaller, and if you look at the keypad, uh, buttons much closer together, smaller. Uh, so it certainly lives up to its name, being a mini. All right, let's get this hooked up to the meter and test power output. I've got the A channel on GMRS1, which has a five watt limit and it's on high power. But the B band is on GMRS channel eight, which is one of the narrow band, lower power, channels. One of the things that's unique about this radio, especially for a GMRS one, is you have dual PTTs, uh, both for the A and the B band on the VFO. So let's power this up and we're on high power. Channel one GMRS. And we're getting just over three watts out, which is a little bit disappointing since these are rated for five. I know they say that um, it's supposed to be five and it probably is going to be a little bit underneath, but I don't think that we're getting that much loss. This is just a short run of ABR Industries, uh, RG8X, coax, just three feet. Um, yes, there's going to be some loss involved at higher frequencies like UHF, but three watts there. And let me actually... 30, 30, 30 go to one of the repeater channels here and just see. Yep, same thing, just over three watts. Now let's go to uh, channel eight. And there you can see we're definitely under a watt, maybe 0.65-ish or so round up to 0.7 watts and that's what we're getting out on uh, one of the lower power ones there so there you go for the power outputs next up let me get the uh, tiny sa ready to go and we're going to take a look at the signal bandwidth we got the radio hooked up to the tiny sa but before i get started shout out to the smoke and ape i was trying to figure this out and how to do this test um, what I want to do is check the bandwidth of these signals. GMRS, you have a wide bandwidth of 20 kilohertz, but you'll see this radio and others advertised at 25 kilohertz, which is what it is uh, for the amateur radio bands. Now, I, I don't know if that's just lazy on the part of some of the manufacturers and they're just carrying over some of the specs for radios like this which they make for both gmrs and amateur radio bands um, or if th there's actually a problem so we're set up and uh, to do a power test and what we're looking at here on the tiny sa is you'll see those blue lines and those are spaced out 
actually 16 kilohertz. Um, and it, ideally, we would like to see the signal concentrated within those 16 kilohertz. We're allowed up to 20 kilohertz. The problem if we start going to any further, get out to 25 kilohertz or more, is GMRS is a channelized service and you'll start to interfere with other stations. We want a good signal to come out. We want as much power, especially if we're only getting three instead of five watts. We want as much power focused on the channel that we are actually trying to transmit on. So what we're gonna do is we're on channel one, which is 462.562.5. Uh, uh, megahertz and we will key up and you can see that FM signal right there uh, but more importantly up at the top you're going to see that 100% of the signal is within that 16 kilohertz bandwidth so this is definitely clean or within spec of where it should be with respect to the signal bandwidth but Let's check the uh, signal harmonics real quick while we got this connected and see what those show. All right, we're all set up to uh, test the uh, harmonics and uh, I got everything all set. One thing I'm gonna point out, this version of the Tiny SA is only gonna go up to 960 megahertz. So it's just gonna be uh, wide enough where I can capture the second harmonic. I'm not gonna be able to see a whole lot of what's going on because we're, in the 462 megahertz range and so that's going to put that harmonic just under the 960 uh, megahertz that this will go up to uh, but we might be able to get an idea now that said there are no uh, spurious emissions uh, harmonic regulations whatever the terminology is um, when it comes to this band and you know frequencies in the UHF range. Uh, but it doesn't give us an idea of how clean that this is because again, we want all the power that we have in this mini radio to be getting out and getting to its destination on the desired frequency. So let's see here. And it's gonna take a minute to settle down. That blue line is gonna be down negative 16.01 or 0.02 uh, dB. And we are seeing that we're well over 40 dB down, which is good, but we are like right at that negative 16 marker. Um, and definitely seeing some spurs. I know that I'm not quite seeing the bandwidth that I want to on here, uh, but we're minus 48 down, and uh, it looks like it's like, like I said, it's right around, you do the maths, that six, minus 16 dB, um, maybe it's just over. So there you go. So do big things come in small packages? Maybe. Uh, let's talk about the good, the bad, and the wigglies. First off, the good. This is a, a, a really tiny radio and they actually pack a lot in here, a lot of, a lot of good features. Um, you know, size wise, this makes it really easy to EDC this radio, uh, especially if you are carrying an HT for the hand bands, but also you want something that you can use for GMRS. Um, you know, the size, like I said, makes it real easy to, uh, to carry around. It's got, USB-C for charging, which is, is really nice and, and makes it super easy. You don't have to worry about, uh, if you wanted to stash this in your spouse's car, you just need a USB-C cable to charge it. You don't have to put a special dock or something like that. Um, so that's, that's really nice. 999 memory channels, Bluetooth programming, chirp programming, air band receive, you got a flashlight, there's even like an Easter egg where you have a stopwatch function on here, which I'm not sure how relevant <laughs> that is, but uh, they do pack a lot in there for the size and, and, and it is at a very affordable price point. But the bad, um, I'm disappointed on the power output, only getting three watts out when I should be getting closer to five. That's a disappointment. And on channel eight, which 
you're limited to half a watt, it was putting out well over half a watt, uh, 0.6 to 0.7. Not a whole lot, but that's still not what the, uh, the regs uh, tell us. So that's not good either. And then of course, I mentioned the, uh, the K connector and uh, the issues with the programming cable. I've never had issues with that programming cable on all the other Bofangs and, uh, and stuff. So I don't know if it's just limited to these actual radios that I got, um, if it's something a little bit more prevalent in the minis or if it's something that is just prevalent and, and, and kind of comes with the territory when you're talking about the Baofangs and some of the, the, the cheaper Chinese radios. Um, still can make it work though. So, you know, that's that. And then lastly, the Wigglies. Um, it's good to see that this radio is well within the, uh, the bandwidth regulations um, and, and that you're getting the bulk of the signal, or in this case, the 100% of the signal within that 16 kilohertz range. That's good. Um, we want to be transmitting our power and our signal on the frequency within the bandwidth uh, that, that, that we have. And uh, that's a good thing. Uh, one of the things, though, I saw with the UV5R Mini um, that uh, Charlie, uh, Freddie Mac, Ham Radio Crusader, um, and definitely check out and give his channel a sub, and while you're at it, subscribe and uh, whatnot to the Smoking Ape. Uh, Freddie Mac punched in uh, 220, or the 1.25 meter band, to see if he could transmit on it. He couldn't, but he could at least receive... I can't even put it in on this. You, you start typing, two, three, zero, and cancel. nope, it just cancels out um, in VFO mode. So no 220 receive. That's really not a big deal, um, I don't think. But it, it would have been something that was nice. Um, it's still pretty wide band as far as receive, and as I mentioned, you have air band. You even have commercial FM radio too. Uh, but lastly, unlocking it. Um, the other aspect of the Wigglies, can this be unlocked to transmit outside of GMRS, whether it's on the ham bands, MERS, marine frequencies? I've tried, I've looked, I have not found a way. Um, I'm not surprised because this is a GMRS radio and from what I've seen um, the last couple years, you certainly see things a lot more locked down when it comes to GMRS versus a few years ago and the ability to make modifications to them. So this definitely seems locked down to, to GMRS. So, you know, for now, we'll just have to accept it for what it is. It's a mini GMRS radio. And GMRS is kind of like that, that cool uncle at family gatherings that plays by his own set of rules. It is what it is. Uh, if you have this radio, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on it. Definitely leave a comment down below. And if you made it this far, I hope that this review has been useful and insightful. I've tried to cover some things that some of the others haven't done so yet. There's a lot of good videos out there on, on programming this radio, whether it's with Bluetooth um, and whatnot and some of the other features. I wanted to take a different approach and uh, I'm still playing with these. Look forward to using them some more. And coming up, I'll actually do a comparison with the uh, Radioddity, this is the uh, GM30 Pro. Uh, definitely a different in size. There's difference in the, uh, the frequencies, the memory channels, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So uh, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison uh, with those radios in another video. But if you haven't yet, please click like, subscribe to my channel, and if you got a comment or question, leave it down below. I'm Mike, N2MAK, and WRQD683. 73.